Okay. Is everything good? Is my audio okay? What's up, Nix? What's up, Mark? Is there anything embarrassing on my camera? I want to wait a few minutes before I start. Too much light, too much face cam. <laughs> hmm. You just want the, the status quo, huh? You want the, the dark, dank stream. Now this is the official dev commentary stream. We have face cams, so you know I'm real. And that this hack wasn't made by a robot. Audio sounds fine, but that means somebody will ask to increase it. Okay. Can't wait. I can do that if needed. We'll wait. We'll wait until Mangor raids. I guess Mangor started. I told Mangor at 8 o'clock, and he's West Coast, so. He took it to mean 8 o'clock West Coast, and uh, so he started dreaming. He's like, oh man, in three hours, I'm going to raid Tuna. But now he's going to raid me now. <laughs> so we'll wait for that, then we'll start. Uh, questions are very welcome, so I have stuff to talk about. I'll, I'll just try to talk about whatever as I play, and then after I finish it, I will show off some earlier versions of levels. Um, so there's like the versions of the levels that Nick played on stream, the uh, the alpha levels, which I'll probably put in my file bin at some point after I make a clear video for them, because they're kind of hard to figure out sometimes. Um, but there's also a bunch of other levels other than those that didn't make the cut. So I'll probably show off those. And then if I have time, maybe I'll play the alpha as well. Started editing your clear today? Nice. Um, so I, I may not, because you already played it and there's going to be a YouTube video for your playthrough. So I, I may not play that if I don't have time. Something else I might do is go through the boss uh, code. Talk about the code a little bit. Um, probably not too much. And yeah. Um, mycelium. Uh, I'm just gonna kill time while I wait for Mango to raid. Uh, I started mycelium during like a, a COVID surge in January 2022. I was like, oh man. Uh, this this is a good opportunity to start making a ROM hack. And then like the surge didn't last very long and then I was stuck making a ROM hack while everybody else went back to their their old lives. Ja it was January 1st, 2022. Like literally the beginning of the year. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I made uh, the first version of level one, which I don't know if I could ever find that version. It ended with a, uh, like a Koopa Surf, RNG Kerf Koopa Surf for like two, two screens. That was before I knew what I was doing with the no overworld. At that point in time, it was, there was going to be an overworld. It was going to be like every level was going to focus on one sprite. And it was going to be like every level was just about that sprite and the overworld was going to be like a a zoo or something where every you were like visiting the biomes of each sprite but uh i quickly realized that it's very hard to de to design levels around single sprites uh 19 days later damn that's cool that is that is pretty uh awesome that you started right around the time i did making this but uh yeah yeah, I just uh, I wanted to make something. I got into Lunar Magic, started making a level. I made level one. 
and uh, I got like addicted to Lunar Magic. Um, and now we're back. It was just incredibly fun to do level design. I feel like the first level flowed very naturally and then it started to get more difficult to get my ideas out. But thanks to my wonderful playtesters, um, I was able to work through that. Um, but yeah. Uh, this title screen is kind of silly. I drew the mycelium. Drawing title screen letters is very difficult. Uh, the name mycelium kind of just emerged some at some point in development. Uh, like I, I watched a documentary on mushrooms. I appreciate the question, by the way. Uh, and, you know, I learned about the word mycelium. Holy shit! Mangor Raid! 809.52! Wow, and just like that, it's 810. Right on time. What's up, Q-Bear? Welcome in. Thank you for the raid, Mangor. What's up, that? It's today! We're here. Um... What's up, Suzo? Um... Hi. Up, Gort. Thank you for the raid. Sorry about the miscommunication on star time. But I appreciate you <laughs> bailing on stream. You didn't have to do that. Um, I'll read you after. Hopefully, I don't think this will go too long. Like, maybe two hours. Max. Um, we'll see, though. See how much there is to talk about. Uh, but yeah, let's go. Let's do it. I want, so yeah, I want the documentary on mushrooms, and I just like the name Mycelium, and the hat kind of has a, a structure where you kind of like go underground. This is better for you? Oh, good. Um, kind of like Mycelium. Oh, there's a one-up up here that very few people found. Um, so for this commentary, like, I'm a little conflicted about how many secrets I should reveal. Especially ones that haven't been found. And like stuff that other stuff uh, people haven't found. There's nothing huge, just like things, little things. But I'll probably not reveal uh, everything. Yeah, there's a one of you. Uh, so yeah, this first section was supposed to be like a little standard esque kind of thing. Just to, just to lull the player into a false sense of security. Uh, I guess level one in general is supposed to just be pretty, pretty easy. Were there other names? No, not really. It was always, that was the only name, really. Glitch Cat didn't find all the secrets? No. Nobody found all of them in their first playthrough. I think the only person who might know all, where all the secrets are is Mega Scott. Because during Mega's testing, um, he found, like, a bunch of weird things, and so I just put secret there. But they're like really, really very knowledgeable about glitches and stuff. Or not glitches, but just like movement and how to how to do certain things. Nobody went up here, but you can go up here. There's nothing up here. Presumably the Coopers fall from up there. Yeah, how they go, Impressionator? You found a good chunk of them. Um. Yeah, they're kind of like scattered around. There's no real order to them. They're just in places that I thought would be nice. It's not like there's one per level or anything. You did go up there. Nice. I sit corrected. Yeah, a lot of things like people may have found that I, I didn't see them find. Uh, I'll show a few things, but I won't show everything. Not that you should go, like, digging for them, but it's it kind of nice to just leave it there for, like, even if, like, a year later somebody stumbles on it, like, I don't know. It's kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, level one is supposed to be very chill. It's supposed to be pretty beginner-friendly. 
Um, yeah, I, like, not supposed to wreck you. You found some, somehow you feel like it's less than half? I don't know that. You found some unintended secrets uh, in the post game, that's for sure. Hope I'm doing well. I am, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Yeah, this is me, hello. I'm Tuna. It's not my real name, but it is. Lavender Forest, that's good. Yeah, that was fun, that. Um, and yeah, this level... It's one of the few levels in the hack that has, like, that's more than one screen high. That isn't a vertical section. And the reason for that is because I didn't know better when I first started making the hack. What's up, CK? You had a ton of fun? I'm so glad to hear that. I enjoyed watching you play it. Uh, what, what I caught of you playing it. Um, yeah, this level is just like a chill little intro. I love this music. Was there any specific inspiration for the level? Not really. I mean, it's literally the only thing that makes it unique probably is the fact that it's the first level I ever made. So I didn't really have any much bias in terms of creation. I just started making and I knew I didn't want it to be difficult. I just wanted it to be like chill. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm very happy with it. I, it's very, very nice and smooth. What's up, Corpo? How to do? Um, the first version of this level that I made initially um, had a had a mushroom in the first half and like. It was almost, it was a little bit standard inspired, but after I made a bunch of the rest of the hack, which didn't have any mushrooms, it just kind of fell out of place. And also misleading, because it kind of made the first session pretty easy and forgiving. Which the rest of the hack is not really that. Yeah, first, so I mean, it went through a lot of changes. Like, the only thing that's truly identical is like, the Chuck Optical in the beginning is literally the first thing I ever put in Lunar Magic. And then the little thing with the RNG um, Koopas, that was uh, original. Um, the second half came later though, but the first half <laughs> I kept intact. I defended it from the from my own instinct to change it. You like the Lil B song? There's a Lil B song that sampled this? Nice. Rip moon. Yeah, there was a moon if you kept the mushroom all the way to the checkpoint. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll show things that somebody found. How about that? If somebody found it, there's a one up right there. <laughs> if you do frame perfect jumps, this composer found that. Shout out to composer. Um, there are some dead Coopers here and a mysterious thing. Uh, thank you, Greg. Um, we'll get back to that later. So the, the overall structure of this game evolved very much over time. Yeah, sorry, Zap. Maybe somehow we can revive them. Um, but like, little things like... Uh, yeah, there's definitely some secrets that nobody has laid eyes on. And the only person that would know where they are is Mega Scott. <clears throat> and maybe some people who watch Mega Playtest. Um, but the, but the, okay, so this little thing where you like, you start select to exit and go back to the hub area, that was like, I, that didn't occur to me for a long time. You have thoughts? Yeah, you might know. You're gonna find him, CK? I dare you. There's definitely a uh, speed strata too I haven't seen yet, which I will not divulge. Uh, so this level went through three revisions. I'll show off the second one after I beat after this playthrough. The first one Nick's played, 
Nathany Alpha ROM. Maybe I'll play through that if I have time. Um, yeah, it, the original version of this level was a lot slower. There was like a spiny escort. You're booting it up, CK? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. They're, I would call them more Easter eggs. That's probably the best description is a little Easter egg. Um, but yeah, just like simple platforming. This is a little bit of a skill check. Like, hey, can you do disco shell stuff? This was the hardest alpha level? Yeah. The original version of this level was like... The second half was this elaborate spiny escort. You had to like kill Koopas and stuff. You're watching wrestling. Oh shit. Nice. Enjoy your lurk, Gorpo. Oh yeah, there's this peace beach that that Mangor is doing insane things with. Uh, apparently you can keep peace speed to the end of this level. Uh, there's definitely, there's gotta be some Fire and Bee Toaster Strudel influence here. I wasn't, I don't think it was a conscious thing, but like, this trick is too, like, I don't know. I, I don't know where I learned it, if not from Toaster Strudel. But you definitely see it around. Um, but yeah, that's level two. Pretty simple. Oh, hang on. I need to show the secret. Um. But yeah, later version. In, in this version, I finally settled in. It's like Koopa behind the tree thing, which was an aesthetic I, I really enjoyed. And it works out visually because the trees are on layer two, so I can kind of like put them behind stuff and it looks, it looks right. So if you go up here, there's a shout out to Cuter Kaizo. Ay ay uh, Made by Flopcore, which is a hack that I ran, I speed ran. Um, and I enjoy it very much. Really, really, really fun beginner hack. And also, the um, the climbing coopers have uh, bow ties, pink bow ties, when they face you. Like, just like in Cuter. But yeah. That's the Cuter guy, though, shout out. There's, I shout out a few hacks in this. Uh, this one, Vanilla Kaizo World. Um, Waterworld, which I think only one person found the Waterworld shout out, and then um, Super Nothing World. Uh, so yeah, that brings you back here, um, and then pe most people are pretty confused at this point. They're like, "Where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> I'm so confused." And then they get here and they're really lost. And everybody goes left first. Like I probably should have dropped the player here so they could see the gates. Um, but yeah, uh, so there's three gates, right? You have to go and open them up. Uh, the overworld structure, I think Susie Step, um, said something once about like, oh, you should do it like this game. And I, I don't know, I don't think that was his intent, but it made me think of this idea. And I thought of Spyro the Dragon and like that structure and I got very excited. And I was like, oh, this is a really cool idea. I have to do this. Um, are, the, are the levels named after the spreads in my mind? Or did I ever have official names? Um, I never had good official names. I call level one, level one. I call level two, level two. Like, for development purposes, you know. Um, this level I call the, the Cherry Blossom level. Like, super generic name. But I, I call this the Cherry Blossom level. Because... It's got that kind of cherry blossom aesthetic. It's not as pink as it used to be, or red. Um, yeah, I call this cherry blossom, even though it's not really. This optical tripped some people up. Maybe I shouldn't have had the coin indicator. Yeah, pretty short first section. It's really just that one optical that tripped people up. Um, this level went through two other versions before this. Uh, which are very different from this version. 
Um, the first version of this, which Nick's played, and Nick knows the pain of, um, was like a precision section that was like pretty slow and also kind of difficult. And uh, what I ended up with was something very fast, like a P-Speed kind of section. Um, yeah, this level is very simple. It's, it's probably the easiest level in the hack, in my opinion. It's also one of the shortest, but I didn't really mind having like a simple level just, just hanging out there. <clears throat> uh, did I have songs in mind? Um... So some people make the levels bare bones and then pick out the aesthetics and songs afterwards. Um, but I, because of the nature of this hack where like the, the feel of the hack and like the vibe all kind of is very important. Like it's very central, you know, like every level feels it's like an in location. Uh, for that reason, I kind of designed everything all together as one. Like I was designing this overworld area as I was designing the levels. I was like, oh, there would probably be a, like a forest treetops kind of level up here. And then I had to flesh that out. And, and oh, there's like water here, right? So maybe there's like a river level over here. That's why I did that tide level. Um, so it all, it all came together all together. Music, like I picked it out as I was designing the aesthetics, all that. So it all, I did it as I went. Um, um, this is one of the only sections in the hack that survived from the first iteration. So this section, I, I built it, it went through like minor tweaks, but this was like the third or fourth section I ever designed. And for some reason, it made it. Um, I found that my earliest designs were like, I got kind of lucky with the design process and somehow creativity I just it just flowed and then after that I just started hitting a hard wall with levels like I could not make I could not make things that were fun um, so then it was like the real learning began it's like it was like beginner with luck it's wild how the concepts changed yes a lot of the levels changed completely uh, you love the old one I like the old one too it, it, they are interesting they're just not not for this hack um, this section had one version before it, um, which was kind of like a weird, it was like a weird precision section with some bubble stuff at the end. A little strange, but not a bad section, it just wasn't as cohesive. Pretty much every time I rebuilt a section, I did, I did not regret it. I, I was, it was a good decision. Yes, the original version, which Nick's Killed Myth played, had a bunch of booings in the second half as well. But yeah, this is just the boo level. I just call it the boo level. Uh, and then we have the tide level. Um, so this level went through one version beforehand. Um, and also tripped a lot of people up. Some people did not enjoy this level. Some people really enjoyed this level. It kind of went both ways. Um, this like urchin movement is vanilla. If you just put an urchin on a slope, it just does this. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, let me do that. I think New Pointless also did this in uh, Super Whatever Quest. Um, yeah, this was fun to design. And then there's just a simple little thing. Um, you could see that urchin over there was stationary. So if you put an urchin on a uh, right on a, on the opposite facing slope, like the other way, and then it's stationary. So you can get a stationary urchin by doing that. This guy's almost in time with some music. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that first section. Um, the port is. Um, mine, I ported this. There are some versions of it in, in SMW Central. Um, but I didn't, they didn't, 
quite capture the song in the way that I wanted, so I gave it a shot myself. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I probably will submit it to the section afterwards. Um, should we visit Vanilla Kaizo World? So this is a shout out to Vanilla Kaizo World, uh, which is a hack that I love. Hang on. I want to show you where I got this from, because I don't think anybody really knew. Um, that room is a direct shout out to level one of Vanilla Kaiser World by Mass Punishment. Which I speed ran for a brief period. Um, great hack. Very vanilla, weird, janky vanilla stuff. And also a, a big influence on me. I tried to keep um, my helium as vanilla as possible. But uh, Vanilla Kaiser World has these blocks. See these? They're like, the red block is like one of zero, but it will also kill Mario. And it also doesn't, um, it doesn't have a butt. Like you can go in it, but if you touch the top of it, you die. And that block is block number one FE. And that's where the, this, the song here is what I have in that secret and the blocks as well and some chucks and stuff. So, so that's where that comes from. I don't think anybody had played Vanilla Kaiser World, so it, it makes sense that people people thought it was like a secret. They didn't know what was going on. Um, but yeah, that's that. Great hack. Um, and then I, I, I forget who I saw do this, but I have this like. Well, let me get the moon first. So if you take a, a block through a pipe, you um, the block becomes an infinite block. It doesn't poof, right? It was you. Um, did you keep the block? Uh, but yeah, people thought you could go through here, but those just kill you. It's just like a little little fun room. Um, you tried to. Um, so I'll, I'll reveal this because I saw somebody do it. I forget who it was. But normally if you try to take it back, there's a hammer bow. If you place a hammer bow in Lunar Magic without a platform, you basically get a vanilla sprite color. Um, that won't hurt you, but it won't let you take items. But if you jump, <laughs> for some reason you can bypass it. And then you just, you get an infinite block. Um, which is, which has some interesting consequences, which I won't go into. But yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. Um, little Chucky boy there. But um, yeah, I don't know. This this level is what it is. Yeah, you could you can just kind of get past it. I, I I forget who I I wish I could remember who did it, but I saw somebody on stream do it. They didn't even know they were doing it. Um, originally, this section was designed with a key, but I couldn't prevent key jumping, and it also there were the movement wasn't forced. Um, and I realized I could use a block and use the block timer to sort of force the player to move quickly. So it kind of worked out. And the basic idea is that I, one day I realized that if you item swim left in a tide, you move very fast. And I really just wanted to design a level around that. Nice tune, thanks. I like this. This is a very, uh, this was my first ever port. It took a very long time to make because porting is hard. Um, so a lot of people had trouble here, jumping out of the water and getting the distance. Um, I, I think, I think it, I, I don't know exactly why, uh, like, I have an idea why. I mean, it, it is consistent, but you have to specifically, you have to be moving up to exit the water, right? And you have to hold jump as you're exiting. You don't press it at the surface, you hold it beforehand. Like holding jump now. And then you have to hold the diagonal, right? So there's, there, there's like a number of things you have to do to make it consistent, but it's, 
I'm, you know, I'm fine with people struggling with it just because it's vanilla and it's just a little bit of movement tech, right? Um, some, and I'm, I'm glad people learned through this how to do with it, but, but yeah, if you just hold jump left and up here, it just works. Um, I remember a composer was playing this and he was really struggling and he was like, how do I do this? And I told him to hold jump, and then immediately it worked. And he was like, "Oh, that's how!" And he got it every time, and he beat the level. So, well, I feel like once I feel like there's some like insider knowledge on how to do that. Um, that's not really common knowledge, um, <clears throat> but it does work. So yeah, that's lo that level. Um, I'll show an older version of that level after this. The Fugu killed you. <laughs> I was watching Purgatory Ray there, and it killed him too. Um, so here's the one way that you, you just cannot make this jump. I was kind of hoping somebody would figure out how to make this jump. Um, small, obviously, if, if you, you know, there was a power up, you deboost, but you just can't. I, I like, I really like this one way because it's not just a one way. It's just a vanilla piece of movement that just isn't possible. Sometimes I wonder if I hadn't patched wall clips if maybe like there would be some way to do it but I, I don't know but uh but yeah you can't get here some people were confused there used to be a level here but that was before i connected the cycle of the uh overworld um yeah that's that i really like i like the way the background shows through the clear water i find this this area very relaxing also this little thing looks a little bit like a guinea pig in my opinion Um, but yeah, that's that. And then I have this little thing, I, this little, like, other way to go. The boo level used to be right here, but I moved it because, uh, it's kind of silly. I moved it because physically it didn't make sense to have a level right here because I wanted everything to potentially be in interconnected, right? So I wanted this to lead to an area to the left of the tree. But if it was right here, then it wouldn't, you know, wouldn't make sense. It'd be like a portal or something. Um, yeah. And the background, this is actually, um, these trees, this is actually a background from SMW Central. But it, the trees had a different texture. And at some point I replaced the texture on the trees, which was very, like, realistic grainy texture with a vanilla tree texture. I'm very happy with how it came out. For some reason, everybody, like, dies here <laughs> they're like what is this and then they die to the spikes i'm not sure why i guess because it's a new tile um but yeah that's uh that's the deep words i call it deep words and then we go to the temple <clears throat> which is kind of like the midway point of the hack everybody does this <laughs> i thought it was kind of funny you just kind of die in a pit. Um, and then you have two more levels. So this level didn't change like at all after I designed it. This level, so after I gave New Pointless the, um, the alpha, yeah, no secret, what the heck. After I gave New Pointless the alpha, I was like, when I gave New Pointless the alpha, that mix blade, I was like, this is the best hack ever. Like, I'm so happy with these levels. Like, everybody's gonna love it. And, uh, New Point has played it, and he, he was honest, you know? <laughs> like, they're not terrible levels, right? They're, Nick enjoyed them, right? But they're not... Nick, uh, New Point has his response, and, and the way he, he, like, told me the way they played and felt and certain jank that happened, and it was not at all what I was going for. And, and that's when I realized that level design is about like learning how to take your ideas and your experience that's in your head and communicate it somehow. And uh, one of his suggestions was like, maybe he do some chocolate, you know, you could try some chocolate to spice it up. Um, and that's where this level came from. I was like, kind of, I was like flustered and almost mad. I was like, God, like the level design is so difficult. Um, and so I angrily made this level. Um, and I'm very happy with it. 
I guess the Thwomps are kind of angry too. Now that I think about it. Getting all this to line up was not particularly fun from a design standpoint. And so yeah, what ended up happening was um, like it was originally going to be as vanilla as possible. But then I ended up being kind of like the you get to the temple and you have like some chocolate, which I, I kind of like in the end. Um, yeah. But yeah, New Pointless is initial feedback. Um, like it made, it made, it, it made such a difference early on. Like it would, it would not be what it, what it, what it is today without his feedback. And like, sure, I could have released the levels as they were initially, but um, I don't know. It just wouldn't have been the same. And there's honestly, there's no universe where that would have happened. For some reason, Mark thinks that you can fireball that tuft of grass. And it, it's a secret. <laughs> uh, you can go back in its pipe, but then you just get trolled. <laughs> It's custom, but it doesn't feel custom. Yeah. It's like, um... Like, I kind of like this way of doing custom stuff, where you have, like... It's, like, still vanilla movement. Like, all... It's vanilla-inspired, you know? Like, it feels like it could exist in the vanilla universe. But it is still custom. Alright, so that's the swamp level. I'm very proud of that level. Oh, there's a moon over here. Have I missed any moons yet? That, I, that people have found. Uh, I didn't put anything here because, I don't know. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes there aren't secrets. I wanted to, I wanted to convey, you know, not, there, there isn't a secret everywhere in this hack. Sometimes there's just a place. You wanted it to be real? Supplemental chocolate. What's up, Taze? Uh, let's show the guinea pig secret. It's kind of a hard jump. So, Susie's depth, uh, when he was playtesting this level, um, for some reason, did this jump, even though he's like, it was really difficult. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll put a, a Susie's depth secret there. <laughs> um... And so I put our old guinea pigs in there. Uh, so now they can live on forever in this room. That's uh, Moose. Oh wait, no. Uh, Susie, Moose, and Eyebrows. Uh, they are spinies. You cannot kill them. The guinea pigs are free. This took you a lot of tries. Yeah. Blame Susie. Step. Yeah, Susie, Moose, and Eyebrows. They were good piggies. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad that secret exists. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this level, I will show the previous iteration of this level. That Koopa used to not have munchers there, so you had to do a falling jump. Which just was not very fun, to be honest. For some reason, because of the, um... Just because of the way the Magic Koopas are, and there's, like, some variation in... The angle that they shoot at. It just ended up being kind of a standard-ish level. Like, this section, you have a lot of opportunities. Which is partially because that's kind of a hard trick. This level rules, I'm glad you think so. This part's hilarious. It's not that difficult if you just kind of like stay level headed, but it's, it's also pretty spammy. Sometimes you can get the funny jump sound if you like jump on the same frame that the Maddie Koopa shoots. Ah. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll show the previous version of this level, but there's like a magic ride at the end of that level that's a bit more messed up. Got some vine action here. Yeah, just, just 
many ideas as I could think of. Um, this on off. Can die to the magic. Hang on, I want to make it happen. No. There it is. You can kill on off with magic. <laughs> Which I did not know before making this level. Um, but that's a vanilla thing that's kind of neat. And, uh... It's pretty funny when it happens to people. I guess there's a speed shot there where you can like do a shell jump. Mangoit found some crazy stuff in this level. Oh, you know what? Prestonator found that first. So he found that Prestonator was playing and they found a shell jump there. Uh, but yeah, there's a few ways to do it. Uh, this part's a little bit toxic, but I like it. And then this is a uh, troll. <laughs> it's a coin. Oh god! It's a coin, but you think it's a Koopa, so you jump out and you die. A very fair, balanced troll. Uh, did my time in the last level of Liddy and Mario World change my opinion of Magic Koopas? No. I still think they're fun and interesting. I'll be a Magic Koopa level. Um, I'll show you the first version. Redoing levels is difficult, but that level, the original version was not nearly as enjoyable or interesting. Um, so I'm glad I redid that one. I think it turned out very nice. Smooch. You gotta smooch the dino every time you come here. And then we have this level. Um, so this has been found. So this level, um, the first section... Uh, people were like, well, this must have taken a lot of planning. I did not plan it at all. <laughs> I started designing the layer two thing. And then, um, I got to like the point where you start doubling back and I realized what I, what I could do. And then I just made it work <laughs> with the spreads I had already placed. Um, and I couldn't bring myself to redesign it because... I was so happy with the idea and I didn't want to, I didn't want to tarnish it at all. So, uh, but yeah, this whole level is about traps, basically. Like I call it temple traps. It's like, what I was thinking like, what in SMW can you touch to trigger something? And then it's like, all right, layer two. But yeah, these jumps are a little bit awkward in part because of, uh, the fact that it was unplanned, the return trip. Uh, but it works out. If it was your favorite level, nice. I know it was uh, Boozy's favorite level too. Um, yeah, this level, it went through some tweaks. It was really hard to make the end work out. Because like, this castle block, when it despawns, it doesn't reset its cycle. It turns out when Castle Block despawn, they keep moving. They don't. They, when they go off screen, they don't. They don't despawn at all. So I had to make sure that you always got there consistently. So like right here, I had to make sure those fireball, those fireballs spawned right, so you could like force the player off the platform. And so when you get back there, um, it's where you need it to be. Not there, and then. <laughs> Janky, uh, janky fireball. Um, and if you're late to the pipe there, uh, you can't get in. You can't go on the top half of the pipe. So then I was like, what else can you touch to uh, trigger things in FMW and, uh, eating blocks, right? Um, I'm very proud of this setup with the, um, blue block here. Originally I had a, a, um, a sprite salad. But when I got to the end of hack development, I only had like one or two sprite solids and like one Mario solid. And I was like, man, I, I want to just get rid of those any way possible so that the hack doesn't have any custom blocks. Um, or I don't know, maybe there are custom blocks, but no, I didn't want any sprite salad to do anything. 
I wanted to see if I, it was possible to, to remove them all. And uh, in most cases it was, or in all cases. Um, but I like this solution of having the blue box, so it's there so the setup works, but you can also pass. And then you got this fry and be in a fry and be a section again. Whoops. Um, this section used to be a little bit different. Yeah, you got it's very trolly this level. Um, and there's one thing I really don't like about it, which is this. <laughs> if you hold jump out of the pipe, this was not intentional, and I, this might be the reason I do a one dot two. If you hold jump out of the pipe, you die. And a lot of people, well, the minority of people, but a lot of people just hold jump through pipes, I guess, which is irresponsible. Uh, and they die, and they just assume that it's like a weird layer two thing, and... Yeah, I wish, I wish that was not a thing that could happen. Um, especially, like, you know, it's possible for somebody to not even realize what's going on and, like, quit the hack. Um, that's probably, like, the only design thing that I really regret. Um, but it didn't happen to most people. You've never seen that yet. It's, it's pretty rare that somebody holds jump. And even if they do, most people neutral the controller the next time around. Um, yeah, if and when I do a 1.2 just to clean up some things, I will definitely make that not a thing. Because there's enough trolls in this level as it is. But yeah, this setup is so silly. You put the blocks on layer 2, and they... If you put, you put blocks on layer 2, they'll do all manner of things. Um, like this angle. <laughs> That's the dumbest troll. No regrets, but holy shit, is this a stupid troll. So, the layer 2 sync sprite, if you put it on screen 0, it does this. It just breaks. It doesn't work. This is a vanilla thing. Um, and you can tactically tell it's screen 0 because the screen doesn't scroll left. So, theoretically, you can know. And then, see how layer 2 jiggles right here? There is a brown block behind the layer 2 right here. Um, so you step on it and it triggers it. And you can also see it right there. Right? You can see, you can see the brown block hiding. <laughs> so... I think maybe one or two people just avoided it. I think Revelog might have somehow... 5,000 IQ'd this setup. I could have a speaker block explaining it. Yeah, that's the thing, Greg, and it's also kind of a nice learning moment. Like, I didn't know that, and because of it, I now know it, and a bunch of other people do too, so... Maybe I just leave it and don't make a 1.2, you know? I just, I recently saw somebody actually quit the hack because of it. Um, like, it happened to them twice, and they were like, I don't know what's happening, and they... But they, they weren't having a good time anyways, but... Um, I don't want that to happen, you know? And it, it's unfair, so... If anything, I probably should have a message box. I, don't, I just every time somebody plays this, I'm, they get here and I'm like, please don't hold jump. Like I don't want you to hold jump, and I'm tired of that. So we'll see. How did you fall for it? <laughs> um, all right. So this section, I'm pretty happy with. It went through like four iterations. This was one of the hardest things to design. Cause it's so it's so claustrophobic, you know. Like you have you have this like you only have one or two screens here to work with horizontally, and then you have these render platforms. But um, it worked out, and it it was just the earlier versions of this were not um, were just like really awkward. And then for some reason that guy does a little jig. Um, oh, and you can get an early hit on the Resnor, which people found out, um, which is, I'm fine with that. I, <laughs> I don't even know how I'd de-cheese that if I wanted to. 
And then we fall down into the water zone. Hydrate. Have an auto scroll with resiners? Yeah. And it's not even an auto scroll, it's the uh, layer two sink. It's, uh, that room is, uh, I think, totally vanilla, other than putting in a resinor. If I do a 1.2, maybe you could do some sneaky thing like disable. Well, I, I would just put a ceiling there. I'd just get rid of the spikes above the pipe and just put a ceiling, which is what I should have done. What happened is, so Fail played it played 1.0 when I put it in my file bin before I release. And it happened to him. He died there, and it was hilarious. And he knew it happened immediately, and he knew what to do. So it worked out. But because it was so funny when it happened to him, I left it in. But I didn't realize that most people don't know about that. And also, most people wouldn't find it funny, so... Make the grass flammable? <laughs> Mark, can you, were you even able to get there with Fire Flower? Is it even possible? Um, so yeah, there's this area here off to the left. Um, a lot of people were like, what is this? What is this area? How do I get there? Um, originally, that was actually a waterfall, or like straight out. But then people would go up it immediately and be confused as to why they could go back. So I made it up here after you beat the game. Um... And so if you go back, you find it and retrace your steps. There's other grass? Oh, God. There's other grass to burn. <sighs> All right. So this one. We enter the Donkey Kong Country music zone. Um, this level went through a lot, especially the second section. Um... A lot of people didn't really like the side water here. Um, which makes sense, like, if you're not used to it. I'm used to it, I'm very comfortable with it, and I think it's fun. Um, uh, did I not turn off? Yeah. Sorry, I had to turn off Wi-Fi on my phone make sure it's a wired connection okay sorry about that um but yeah i speed around water world so i'm very comfortable with it and i don't know i'm okay with it like from a, from a fundamental point of view just because it's vanilla and I'm, if it's vanilla then it's fair game in my in my in my weird conception of smw Dad made a water level where you can die to spikes coming out of a pipe. <laughs> yeah, but that's Eldad and Morsel, you know? This hack is supposed to be... This hack is my nice side. This hack is supposed to be friendly. And nice and fair. So... It's fine, but it's not fine. It's, just, it's the only thing like it in the hack. Um... This fish, there used to be two fish here instead of one, which was a lot harder. A lot of people tried to like get on the dolphins and spin here, which I like because it's funny to me that they would do that instead of just walking through the dolphins. Oh my god. Uh, what you learned is that old hack and old hack creators get away with more than newer creators. Barb complaining you use too many Kaizo blocks when he used more in his first three levels of Grand Pool World 1. Yeah, you can always just kind of throw Grand Pool World 1 at Barb. You're totally right, Bufflin. That's that's the that's a whole uh, discussion, too. Like, I mean... You know, there, used, there were fewer hacks back then, right? Um, so for that reason, people could get away with more. Um, but also, you know, if you're, there's this kind of prevailing sentiment that, I, which I don't share, but some people maybe don't consciously do this, but they, it happens, is that if you're not a well-known creator, um, then you, you have to like earn the right to make difficult stuff or something. 19 days till Mario Bros. Wonder. Holy shit. 
and do NG34. Um, nice. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a little silly, right? Like, uh, Liddy and Mario World, which I just finished, like, Jonah wasn't, I don't think, very well known when it came out, and it was extremely difficult, and, uh, didn't get a lot of play. Um, I don't know. I guess that's just how it goes sometimes. But yeah, on that topic, I'll probably make, uh... Not very nice hack at some point in the future. Now that I've established my uh, audience with this hack, I can ruin it. <laughs> I can ruin my reputation. Like Fire did with 10 Yums. You're so hyped for Wonder. License to design in any style is silly. Everyone should make whatever fucked up or kind things align with their creative vision. <laughs> what fire? What's up, uh, Lane? How's it going? L Memory Lane, world record holder of this hack. People like Tanyums, they do. French fries and French toast. <laughs> yeah, I gotta play that. And whoever does or doesn't play the really hard thing, that's how it shakes out, yeah. Play Wonder only if you're high, Kappa. Yeah, I'm gonna spend that reputation immediately. That's right. Um, so the only person that found this that I'm aware of is Light Aligned. But uh, you can get back in this pipe. It's, it's, this is definitely the most difficult secret. Mario game feeling easier now. Yeah. What happened to the good old days? Oh my god. Why is this a thing? Oh god! <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's up, Space Pig? How's it going? I'm watching you make your hack looks pretty dope. Easy to say, coming from Schema Hack of the Year Tuna. Who saw the hack of the year? Who would say that? Uh, so this is a shout out to Waterworld. It's got Baba graphics. And it's uh, really annoying. <laughs> Sidewater precision. Excuse me. Oh god. Who made that secret? This secret? I made this. Uh. Basically just, if you didn't like Sidewater, now do Precision Sidewater. You want Dashy to play this? <laughs> I, uh, you should ask him to play it, yeah. Oh. So that's the moon that exists. He'll yell, he'll, he'll yell his lungs out. <coughs> uh, I'm sure he would. Um, but yeah. This level. Um, like this. This, had, this level went, this section in particular, went through a lot of revisions. Um, like four, or, f whoops. Went through one, two, three, four, and this is the fifth revision. Cause holy crap, making a descending water section is incredibly difficult. Uh, and I'll show off at least one of them, maybe two. Nick's played one of them, the first version, which isn't bad. It's just a little simple. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. It's still not perfect. The ending is a little weird. Like I kind of. Kind of just ran out of ideas with the ending. Um, not here. I'm, I'm. I like this, but what? But like, I got here and I did this, and there's no way to like force movement there without it being unfair. And that just kind of ends. But I don't. know. It worked out. I'm, I'm happy with it. 
The secret used to be right here with a hidden pipe, but I moved it back to the beginning. Four is a lot. Oh, God, Bufflin. <laughs> I guess you would know. Are we still talking about Dashy? I do. I, I, would, I would prefer to focus on uh, the dev retrospective than, than Dashy. But I do agree Dashy is entertaining. I do agree. And I'm excited for Wonder as well. Um, anyways, yeah. So that's the falling water level. Um, I, a few playtesters were, play were like, yeah, the side water is going to make some people mad. Um, but I was like, alright, whatever. I don't, I don't mind, uh, what's up, fail? I don't mind that. I don't mind people maybe having an excuse to get better at that. You got, you got pretty much all of them? Nice. Damn, Wayne. Oh, you missed. I think you said you got them. Um... Now we enter the bone zone. Um, I probably should have put a secret here. Maybe 1.2. I want to make him mad. I want to make him mad in a good way. Uh, there's a speed chat where you can like go under that muncher on that chuck. Um, but it's kind of hard, so I'm not going to do it. This football chuck is on a global timer. Um, so I had to make sure to force you to move at the beginning. Oh, Andrew and G, this is my hack. Um, I made this. I made this, I released it, it's called Mycelium. It is on smwcentral.net, or .com. And you can play it. Right now I'm going through it and I'm talking about it and the design process and uh, how it, how I designed it and you know how what, like a little behind, behind the scenes look. So that's that's what I'm talking about right now. You made this? Oh no! Tickle said it, which means it's true. The inspiration for the Chuck Escort. Um, I'll talk about that. Yeah, Here, let me get there. So you can just hit that Chuck. Um, well, I didn't do anything there. Um, you mentioned that the levels and hubs are unfolded in tandem. The water level got moved. Um, good question. Yeah, the, I did, though, in the original version, the water level that in this hub area used to be up in the deep forest area. And at some point, it just made more sense for it to be here because of the theming. Uh, like having a cave area and like the place that it used to be got chained to be a shortcut between this area and the first area so that I'd moved it here and then I re and then there was a missing level back in the deep forest and then I had to come up with the water level idea to replace it there so I came up with the fast tide uh, item swim level that's kind of how that worked out Um, yeah, let me, let me beat this real quick. This level is, the, I think, one of the first sections I designed where level design finally started to, like, click. Like, this level went through very few changes other than making opticals work. All of the ideas were the first ideas I made. Metroid vibes? Yeah, I guess so. People have called this a Metroidvania, which is not... Super accurate, but uh, I get it. I feel like a Metroidvania would need to have more of a sense of unlockable progression, whereas this is very like straightforward progression. Um, so you're supposed to bounce on the on the football and trigger the bat, but you can just do this, <laughs> which is much easier. And then, yeah, so this section, so when I first started Lunar Magic, I made level, the first half of level one that exists in this hack, and then I made this section as the second half to that level. Um, so this is the second section I ever designed. 
and I would I wanted like it was back when I wanted every level to be about like one sprite. I wanted like one sprite, and that's why the the ghost level is just one eerie ride. It's kind of an auto scroller, but. I wanted like to focus on just one sprite per level, and that that kind of didn't end up happening in the end. But that's what it, I was like. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this work. I'm just gonna have a jumping chuck, and I'm gonna have the whole level be about that. And that's kind of where this level came from. Yeah, yeah, Andrew, you gotta you take this football player, and you kind of clear the way for it to jump, or else it falls in the lava. And like. Any way you mess up, it falls in lava, which I, I like. Um, this jump is awkward, but <laughs> it is what it is. This was the hardest thing right here, to get the chuck to consistently follow you. And then very few people were able to re first try that, like, up warp onto the uh, skull raft. Then nobody saw this because everybody ran to the ending, but... So, this right here is a shout out to a section that never was. I spent like six hours one day um, trying to make a splitting chuck escort work. Like a level where you start out with a splitting chuck and then you lead all three chucks and use all three of them with a total of nine hits to get to the end of the section. And I uh, could not make that work, to nobody's surprise. How long did it take me? Uh, well, each level it depends, but quite a while. But the hack took me about 18 months total. Giving yourself a sprite. Yeah, it, it, it did work out. Um, but what happened is, like, it didn't, like, really come through from the player's experience that I was trying to go for that. And at some point, I was like, alright, I'm just gonna make levels and stop worrying about the whole one sprite thing. I had some weird design principles when I first started out. Um, so not many people notice this, I, I don't, I think. But every time you beat a level, the lava goes down one tile. So it's down two tiles now because I beat two levels. And I did this with a custom object. Basically, I just have a custom object using object tool that detects what the levels are beaten and then draws all the tiles depending on what's been beaten. Um, you notice that? Hell yeah, Liam. Um, yeah, it's kind of not really something you would notice. Um, this level was also kind of one shot. In the, in the design sense. Um, like I, I just made this level. I, I just was really hitting a stride with level design and was very happy with it. Um, it went through some changes, but for the, it didn't get a full redesign. About the, around this time, I stopped doing complete ground up redesigns. Except for the water levels, because water is very difficult to design with. I like that optical. Oh my god. Oh, you didn't notice that. Yeah, I don't think anybody noticed. No. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Pretty simple level. Just like platforming rope stuff. Pretty happy with how it came out. I have an early version of this on my YouTube, but it's not that different. No rope glitch. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on the whole rope glitch thing, because, like, the hack is, like, supposed to be mostly vanilla. But, like, I designed an optical around rope glitch patch, and so it's a little weird, but whatever. Like, it's fun. People figured it out. Uh, but yeah, I beat that. I can fall down here. Uh, at any point, were you aware of intending the one pixel platform stall to be an option at the double checkerboard platform in section one? Oh, no, Nix. I wasn't. I saw Zap do that, and 
was it Zap? I think Zap did it, right? I mean, I saw you do it too. Uh, I did not realize that was a thing you could do. So, cool that it is. Yeah, it is, it is cool. Bomb hacking is, is really cool. Uh, in section one of the platform level, you like cheese that one stall by going on the pick one pixel of the platform as it was raising. I think that was you. So I thought it was kind of funny here to have a have you die <laughs> if you try to go down. Everybody did it. If it was you, then it was an accident. Hmm. Uh, the air here is thick with spores, and the fauna have adapted. Uh, so yeah, this is a level that exists. <clears throat> Let me get some water here. I thought easier than uh, lining up. Yeah, I think it is a little easier. It's like a gray cement block, yeah. Um, so this section, I knew I wanted some kind of weird effect from the mushrooms and stuff. And so initially, I was going to have, like, so Deed of the Fourth on their Patreon has Sprite Speed Patch and a Mario Speed Patch. And so originally, I, I, I played around with Fast Mario, with, like, Mario at double speed, which works really well and feels pretty natural, honestly. It feels like double speed Mario. Um, but I decided it was too much. Like, it, this, there was some weird, that would have been some weird stuff. Um, so I just stuck to fast sprites. Um, but it ended up being for most of the sprites, I had to use a disassembly to get them to behave exactly how I wanted. So that's kind of how that worked out. Um, so this level is mostly designed. The up throw is silly, uh, <laughs> you up throw an item. I made sure not to have any items here. Because they were so janky. Um, it's kind of a weird design error, but most people try to do this. Which is way harder than staying left on the platform. Um, but uh, maybe I could have prevented that, I don't know. But Most people figured it out. Double speed, man. But yeah, I was thinking, like, maybe the sprite would be fast, and then Mario would become affected, and then Mario would be fast. Or, alternatively, the, the sprites would become slow because Mario was moving faster, relatively. Some kind of relativity thing. I don't know. I had all kinds of weird ideas, but... This one, was, this level was very fun to design. I remember the weekend I designed it, I was like, holy shit. I need to be done with this hack. <laughs> and, uh... kind of churn through it. And then I decided to make the boss, and that was the decision that I made. So there's a secret up here. Oops. Play Super Nothing World by New Pointless. Usually the meme is play Crusoe Ecstasy by New, by New Pointless, but I love Super Nothing World, and I haven't played Crusoe Ecstasy yet. So that's, uh, that's this room. And then this check is pretty funny. You can also hit him. And he's, he's kind of a hyper chuck. <laughs> I love that chuck. Try going sideways. <laughs> oh god, Mark. <laughs> oh no. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah. This is uh, just kind of a fun level. I don't know. I like this level a lot. I'm happy with it. Designing around fast breaks was really fun. There's like a tax on the player to like learn all these behaviors. But for the most part, I think it's intuitive in the sense that they move. They're just faster. But, uh, but yeah, this setup was hard to force. But I really liked running in front of the saw. Pretty much nobody died to this troll. I kind of thought people would stop here and get confused. But everybody like did this or just like ran back. Probably the best. It, it's definitely one of my favorites. It's just like, and the music and the background, it all kind of works for me. 
but it was also very silly. Oh man, they, the end of this section used to be a... You had to catch a falling thwomp uh, midair. <coughs> and it was like a double speed thwomp. So you had to like catch it at the bottom. It was really messed up. And I, I took it out before it even got tested. Uh, I like this five setup. Getting this, this respawn to work was pretty tough. Cause it, was, it was really hard to find a way to consistently make the player go far right enough and then far left enough to make sure it spawns every time. That's kind of the tough thing about designing uh, respawn opticals. Is you have to make sure they go back and forth enough distance. Um, but they're pretty fun though. I like I like reusing spreads. Kind of like a it statifies the like minimalist in me. To just like keep it simple and just have um have as few spreads as possible. Kind of a weird, eerie ride, and this exists. There used to be a Kaizo here. Nah, I took it out. I don't think anybody would have hit it anyways. It wasn't really, <laughs> didn't really serve any purpose. And then this guy, uh, a lot of people like tried to do this weird, res like get it to not respawn, which I didn't think was possible, but apparently it is. You're we supposed to just go under there. Um, these balls bouncing off walls is not vanilla. I had to code that. Uh, did I code it? I think I coded it. This level is very, is very chocolate. <laughs> it definitely. It's interesting to think about, like, some hacks, like, with the final hard level, they'll do, like, a crazy chocolate thing, and other ones will just be a really hard vanilla level. I feel like um, as a new designer, it's pretty difficult to to do that vanilla final level thing. Like, um, like I keep referencing like Fail World has a good final level where it's just like really tough vanilla stuff, and that difficulty makes it a good final level. Um, but you can also like use chocolate to make it feel fresh and difficult. It's just kind of like two sides of the same coin. Um, but I, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have enough faith in my design ability to just make like a appropriately fun, difficult final level. So I kind of like ended up using the fast sprite thing and the level just fell into place and it worked out. Good chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Jumping. As long as you don't move much when you land, the ball won't respawn. Yeah. People were doing that and I was like, oh no. Oh yeah, so if you go back here, everybody got lost in this overworld, but uh, I have like a pipe that appears. Um, I think you can take the shell through and get a mushroom, <laughs> um, but the pipe appears and you can like beat the level again and quickly get back to where you were. Um, yeah, and then we have this like little chamber here, which is technically part of the overworld. And then this is where the real level begins. The actual like new new overworld level. Um, and then these torches. I guess this is like Zelda inspired or something. Uh, I don't really know where this idea came from, honestly. Uh, I wanted to -do 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 -do. I wanted the chime, but I couldn't find it on SMW Central, and I couldn't figure out how to get it in. So, Magic Koopa noise it is. Where do I go if I get a hundred bonus stars? Mm. Good question. Uh, there's a candle missing here <laughs> because that's just what happens if you put the uh, vanilla background there. If only I'd known you well enough. 
Damn. One dot two. That would be a really good one dot two change. Um, you can technically get this mushroom. If you do that. SMH. And then the boss fight. Uh, this boss fight, it took six months to make. It was like a third of the total development time of the hack. Um, I remember the day I decided to make this. Let's do it, Tuna. Maybe we will. I need to decide that I'm doing a 1.2. I think I am. But I'm not positive. Oh, the candle? No, I'm going to leave the candle. So yeah, this boss took a long time. I had to like... I had already learned ASM through doing the the Thwomp level and the Magic Koopa level and also the No Overworld stuff. Um, but this was a whole other beast. Um, I didn't I didn't have the auto scroller thing in between phases until like near the end. I basically every attack was like several days of work or like a week of work in the beginning and then it got easier as I went. And that's kind of the reason why this boss is like very compartmentalized with its attacks. It's like attack, 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 attack. It's because I was learning ASM and each attack was like a study in ASM for me. And so originally it was just a bunch of attacks, completely random. And every, every day I would like try to make a new attack. Whoops. And until I had built up enough that I could start separating it into phases and organizing the structure. And it just slowly emerged. Um, my biggest issue with this boss fight is that it doesn't have fantastic flow, in my opinion. Um, like, I kind of wish it was more of a constant barrage of attacks and uh, more of a continuous series of movements. Um, like, I, I really enjoy Grand Pool 2 Bowser. In that respect, like, you're always moving. I like that. I like that in a boss fight. But by the time I realized that, um, it would have required, like, a fundamental redesign of the boss. So I, I went ahead and finished it, and I'm still happy with it. It's still fun. But it's also, you know, it, it could have been... I, I, I feel like if I ever do a boss fight again, I'll, I'll do it a little differently. Um, but yeah... Yeah, uh, but I was saying the day I, I decided to make this boss, I was talking to my friend who didn't know anything about Mario, but I was telling him about my hack because I tell everybody about my hack. And I was like, man, I'm like nearing the end of my hack, but I, I don't know if I should do a big boss fight. Like, it'll, I know it'll, it'll take a long time to do. I don't know if it's worth it. And he was like, you know what, man? I feel like you got to go all out. I feel like you just got to go all out. If you're, if you're doing it, you're doing it. You're making it. And I was like, all right, like, I guess, yeah, you're right. Like, I got to go all out. I'm going to do it. I'm just going to make the boss fight, no matter how long it takes. I'm going to finish the hack, like, super strong. Um, I don't know what I would have done if I hadn't have done the boss fight. Maybe it would have been, like, a final cape section, but it's not really worth thinking about what if, right? Um, it, is, it is part of the hack. It, it kind of defines the hack. Um, yeah. Uh, was there a hardest part? How long did it take? How much ASM? Um, I think it's, um, man, I have, I have some math for how many lines of ASM there are. I can do, I can do the calculation after this, but it, it's like, um, you know, like many thousands. <laughs> I think it's in the thousands. It's like, it's unbelievable the quantity of code. I'll show it off a little. Um, the hardest part was, you know, the beginning of this phase when the when the fire bar is sort of spin around um, in a circle. Um, in order to do that, I had to make sure the fire bar like origin position lined up with the pupils of the eyes. As the eyes rotated in a circle, 
And as the fire bar is rotated in a circle, and the angle of the fire bar had to stay, like, um, orthogonal to the to the circle. And that was really difficult because the fire bar didn't have a hook in the code to control the low the low bite of the angle, um, and so I had to like find the memory address in the fire bar code to like control its angle really fine tuned. Because you can you can yeah you can set its speed, but you can't set its angle directly. That that attack was very difficult. Um, Burnap helped me with some stuff as well. Um, like a really big thing is structuring the boss fight. You need a state tree, right? You gotta say, okay, the fights begin. There's a state for that. There's a, there's a RAM address for state for the boss phase, right? Phase one, two, or three. And then there's within each phase, there's another state tree for okay, is this phase, is this uh, the fire bar attack? Is this the first? Is this the beginning? Um, there's how many attacks have happened? Should we throw a bomb yet? It throws a bomb every two attacks. Um, which is a decision I made at some point. I felt balanced enough. Um, doing that structure, that state, um, controlling the read pointer to like go through the state tree and like pick out what attack should happen and the RNG. The higher level structure was very difficult. Um, and there were not a ton of good resources for that other than Fernap and, uh, you know, I downloaded like the boot boss disassembly and I used that. Um, I'm happy to like help anybody who wants to do this kind of thing. Uh, whoops. Okay, we're gonna keep the bomb and get a shell. I forget when I decided that you could be able to keep a shell. And I don't know why I made it only so that you have to be holding the shell to keep it, but such it is. Uh, is the boss a fun guy? Um, sure. <laughs> I don't know. The boss's name is Mycelia, so I guess it must be, right? Mycelia, Mycelium. Um, obviously it's based off of Cacklena from Super Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, which is where the music is from. Uh, I also did this port, um, which uses the samples from Mario & Luigi. I used some MIDI. Um, it's pretty accurate, I think. No! Um, yeah, I think, it's, uh, I think it's, a, it's a mushroom, right? What's up, sauce? It looks like the snail's eyes when they're infected by a parasite. Lane, that's good lore, honestly. Maybe the eyes aren't the enemy. Maybe it's infected by the mushrooms. And it's actually a kind of being. You definitely plan on trying to make a custom boss, but it is scary. Face Pig, it is so scary. Custom bosses are so weird because there's such a... There's like a big, uh, like, sort of... Um, strain of thought in the community. Um, which is fine and I respect it. That boss, that hack don't need boss fights, like, at all. Like, especially fully custom ones. Like, they shouldn't really, they don't want them, they, they don't want anything to do with them. They don't, like, just don't make a custom boss. And pretty much no matter what you do, those people will not enjoy your custom boss. And you kind of have to accept that, right? It's a risk, as a designer, to make one at all. And on top of that, um, it is extremely hard to make a boss at all. Um, and I think part of the reason that there's like a mindset of bosses are bad, don't make a boss, is because how bosses are so difficult to make that they often aren't, they don't come out great. <laughs> and by the time you, you can't really iterate on a boss, right? Because it takes so much time to make the first draft, you can't like, you can't do it again, right? You got to release the hack. So it's like a conundrum, right? You, you got to like get... It's like, I made Mycelia, right? And it's, it, I, I'm proud of it. I think it's pretty good. It's got its problems. It's not perfect. It's pretty long, you know? It's got flaws, but... But, like, I wanted to try, you know? Because, like, there are bosses out there that are incredible. Thanks for the Gs. And, like, like I really enjoy Climax from Jump. 
if Jump didn't have Climax, what you know, that, would, that hack would be totally different. Um, if Grand Pool didn't have Bowser, like that would be totally different. Um, even Grand Pool one Bowser. Um, what other bosses? I don't, I don't know. If y'all have any bosses you like, let me know. But the thing is, those bosses were made by extremely experienced people who have already made their bad boss. They've gotten their bad boss out of the way. Um, and so they can make a good boss. It's like it's like level design, right? Your first level is going to suck. Your first boss might suck. So, so it's tough. It's just tough. It's just very... Oh, yeah, Zara. I haven't played it, but I, it looks fun. Gaiden, uh, SMW Gaiden. Yeah, Jump. Jump Half has some good ones. Wild Heart, Fennel. Like, what would those have to be without those bosses? And so I, I don't think it's fair to discourage people from making them just because most of them aren't good <laughs> or fun. I think peop I think it's worth trying if you want. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think bosses... I don't think hacks need bosses. But, um... This hack felt like it wanted one, so I did my best to serve the hack, so to speak. Um, but yeah, that, those are my thoughts on bosses. Like, they're hard, but just because it's hard doesn't mean you shouldn't try. Just like making a hack. Uh, but it is a risk. It doesn't have to happen. But the more we talk about it and try to make them, uh, the better. The better they'll be, right? If there was more of a community conversation on them, maybe people would have a better idea of how to make them good. So let's talk about it. I would love to see critical conversation around Mycelia, this boss. If you guys didn't like something about it, I actually really want to hear what the, what you didn't like. Because um, otherwise, I'm not going to know how to improve. So, and other people aren't either. Um, so I missed a question from CK. Or no, I missed a question from Mark. Did I try porting before this hack. Uh, no, I had never ported before this hack. What happened was I got to the tide level um, and I realized there was no song in SMW Central that fit the level. And so I had to make it. Like I, I didn't really have a choice. It was just like, I, I was like, man, Tidal Tempest from Sonic CD is the perfect song, but these ports don't sound right. So I, uh, I ported it because it was the only thing that would have made the level complete. It helped the feeling of a climax and a solid, strong finish. Yeah, I thought for sure. And I think you can achieve that with a very difficult level. I think I don't think you need a boss, but it does do something, right? Like it, it even if it's hard, even if it's annoying, when you get through, there's a, oh, like there's a, I did it. And now other people have to do it. And if anybody beats this hack, then they did that, and I know they did that. And it's, it's like a squeeze, kind of a squeeze. It's like you can't beat the tap unless you do this dumb thing I made. Um, you, you messaged me the secret? All right, let's see it next. What'd you find? <laughs> Damn, um... No, Nick. Nobody has found that. Uh, do you want me to show it off? I can show that off. Nick has... Um, discovered that you can keep a mushroom out of the fast sprite level and get an extra hit in the boss. If you go back after you beat it and take a shell through the pipe. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody do that. My only complaint is the open attack feels slower than the other attacks. Wish they were faster. Yeah, abs I agree, Lynn. What's up, Dom? What's up, Pigeon? Um, yeah, that was like something towards the end of the boss. I was like, man, these fire bar attacks are kind of a slog. But this is... The okay, here's the other thing that's really difficult about boss fights. You, They take an incredible amount of time and effort and, and energy and pain... And so by the time you're done, it is incredibly difficult to remove anything and, like, make it easier and cut content. The fire bar attacks were, like, one of the hardest things to make. And it crossed my mind, like, maybe I should just remove all of them. The fight will go faster. It'll be a less of an auto-scroller. But I just couldn't bring myself to do it. So, 
I don't know. They were like kind of formative, and so I had to keep them. But I think I think that's one of the biggest things with like with like um, making a boss is. And one of the reasons a lot of bosses end up way harder than they maybe should be is that the creator puts so much time into it. A, they forget how difficult it is. B, they don't want, they want the difficulty to reflect how much energy was put into it. I tried very hard with Mycelia to not fall victim to that fallacy, to, to not let the six months it took make it incredibly difficult. Um, and I tried to nerf it as much as I could and make it readable, but it still ended up happening. It's so hard, you know. The in-between platforming could have been more intense. I think that's a good thought. I wanted, I didn't want people to die to them. I felt like they were like not the real fight, and so I wanted to make them pretty trivial so that people wouldn't die. I didn't really want people to die. Um. That's why they're kind of easy. In general, I didn't want people to die. And um, to my knowledge, two people one-shot the boss. Yeah, fail. Uh, Blygon one-shot it in testing. And Glitchcat one-shot it as well. Which was really cool. Glitch got to the end. He was like, am I going to one-shot this boss? And he was so excited. There's kind of a bell curve to how people enjoyed the boss. If you beat it really quick, you love the boss. Um, because you beat it quick. If you took a long time and it was a grind, well, it kind of goes both ways. But a lot of people who took a while and maybe they're not as experienced at the game, they loved it too because, oh man, like they, they I don't know, they had to like grind through it and learn it slowly and they accepted the situation at some point and maybe got Stockholmed into liking it. The people who were in the middle and like kind of got stuck and... and Eh, I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm oversimplifying it. Some people liked it. Some people didn't. That's always going to happen, right? Some people didn't like the hack in general, so... Always going to happen with any creative work. Uh, my instinct of not wanting people to die is the better instinct. Probably. <laughs> There's the, the boo wheel attack in the third phase is pretty bullshit. But it's fair, right? You can... I mean, I don't know. It's readable. You went back to the left thinking you needed to go to the left and didn't see the ending. Yeah, a lot of people did that. Um, all right, let's do what Nick did. Yeah, so you can bring a mushroom. Um, counter break is not on an attack. I I think because originally I I just wanted people... like I, There were some levels with mushrooms in earlier versions and I wanted people to be able to keep them if they wanted... So you can, you can keep mushrooms for the boss fight, I guess. Um, but yeah. You sh yeah, Nick did it uh, without a mushroom, the boss fight. Um, the hack felt like a movie. Nice. Yeah, people said that. I, it wasn't really my intention to make it cinematic, but I love that that's how it came across. I guess, I guess my intention was kind of that, to just make it like, um, you know, just like a, a continu- a continuity, you know? And then you can go back. Oh, and then when you take damage, for some reason, I don't know why there's no ASM for this, you take damage really quickly, and I don't think the game even freezes. I, I, there's something weird in the flux base round that makes that happen, but uh, it's not really very consequential. Uh, Alright, so. Uh, these jumps are pretty awful. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to make it kind of difficult to find this secret. Oh, and you can't go back into the temple with Yoshi. And I did that intentionally because if you go back in with Yoshi, the camera is a tile higher. And it messes up all the screen scrolling, single screen thing. And if you go back into the uh, cave with Yoshi, it actually kind of messes it up there, too. Uh, when you grab the flower, the mushroom goes in the item box. Yeah, yes. And then you, get, you have an easier time. 
You could also get another item by doing the spin jump onto the lower platform under the door um, to get another one when you first get there. Um, so yeah, uh, when you come back here, the two Koopas have come back alive and the fire is lit. Um, and you can go up here. You can also bounce on the, um, the triangle to get up here. Um, this guy is from Mangord's Chicken Game. Uh, I don't have. I would share a link to that if I had it. Um, sorry, my ca my camera is always askew. But Mangord has a little chicken Chicken Man game called Where's My Chicken Man, and it's this little guy has the jankiest physics imaginable, and uh, I speed ran that game and I broke it in many ways. Um, which has set Mangoy on a warpath to break my games. Um, yeah, where's my chicken, man? It's a little, like, like desktop game. It's, it's a very silly game where you get the quest to find chicken. I found how to, I figured out how to, like, warp arbitrarily and do wall jumps and stuff. Um, so originally this area wasn't here. You would bring Yoshi and go up top, and then it would just be a secret little room that didn't do anything. But New Pointless was like, you really need more secrets. And I was like, okay. So I put Kuso. <laughs> and I'm glad this section is difficult to find because most people probably don't really want to do Kuso. So, but it exists. I don't know. I just kind of wanted something for my friends who, uh, who are into that stuff. Let me, uh, let me get this spring clip. A lot of these clips are inspired by, uh, my low percent investigation into, uh, Jump. The game Jump. Um. Some of these clips are required to beat Jump without power-ups. Some levels in Jump. Oh, RB Machak did the coolest clip here. I guess Fail did it first, though. And it is a known clip. I wonder if any of you haven't seen this, but you can, like... Oh, it's, it's so hard. <laughs> How do you do it? See how Mario clips up for a frame or two? I, I really, I was hoping people would find alt strat and I would learn stuff. And I was not disappointed. got this. Ah! How do you do this? Could be easier as Big Mario? Hmm. Show the patch specific block dupe that, that next time. Okay. Yeah, you might be right, Fail. Oh yeah, you're definitely right. Jump on key, no dis- do you even need to dismount? My camera's moving back and forth. Hmm. Is it like refocusing or something? There it is. That's the clip. <laughs> is it possible without dismounting? I'll just jump off the key. That may, that may be work. Yeah, the camera kind of auto focuses sometimes. 
There might be some way to fix that. Um, similar to the wall triangle clip. Hmm. Interesting. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, so Nyx found... Uh, interesting dupe, which is only possible. So this attack has wall has uh, block dupes patched out. Never again. I'll never patch dupes again. That's probably a lie. So if you just run up to the block and up throw it, I think this works with any hack that has modern block dupe. But if you just run up to a block and up throw, you can get like trivial dupes. It's crazy. Um. Oh no. Well, now I have to do this uh, the difficult way. Oh, God. How do I get in here? I don't have a power up anymore. <laughs> I just have to, like, time the frame. There was a bug uh, DRK found in a base room. Oh, maybe. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm not gonna get this. Um, so you can get a power up and just kind of clip through there with spin jumps. Ever made an update? Okay, neat. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess that since been fixed. Sad, but fair. Right, I'm not going to spend too much time on this because there's a bunch of other stuff I want to show. Um, but yeah, you can, uh, you can, you can do this the hard way or the easy way. So, the intended way is to like, oops, it's a spam jump here. And you can go through like that. <laughs> but you can also spin clip. Um, which I, I, I knew that was a possibility. I, I just kind of think it's an annoying trick, so I didn't want to make people do it. Um, and then here you can key jump. I don't feel like doing that because I'm not that good at them. But you can key jump all the way up. But uh, you can also just kind of fly. Uh... And then I need to spring again to get the last one. Which is up here. And then there's uh, some cutoff right there. You can see very briefly. Secret cutoff. Uh, some people, you know, were looking for secrets here. Uh, I guess I won't spoil their sense of wonder, but I didn't really expect many people to find the moon up here at all, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, maybe I'll put a little jingle in 1.2 or something if you get all five moons. Um, what I learned with this hack is never underestimate the players um, in their desire to find secrets. <laughs> You can go crazy with secrets and people will probably find them. Assuming people play your hack. Um, but yeah. That's that. Um, you can kind of mess around in the post game if you want. You can take Yoshi to levels and break the hack in various ways. Like, um, here, let me show some stuff Zaplex found. I need, I need cape. You have good off-screen moons. <laughs> Fun Yoshi job. I haven't really, honestly, messed around with Yoshi and levels that much. You wouldn't be caught dead, so my secrets are safe from you. What a heartwarming comment. Actually, let's get let's get like two capes just for fun. I need to I need to move on to some of the beta content, and then I'm, I'm gonna call a stream. Not gonna go too much longer here, but I wanna show off some early levels and maybe show off some of the boss code. 
Um, I'll do boss code at the end, just because some people probably might not be interested. Just kidding. I, I knew you were going to feel bad and apologize. <clears throat> um, getting Yoshi to the end of section one of Torpedo Ted. <laughs> Linux. Whoops. I didn't mean to go down here. Actually, yes, I did. Got him. There's a, there's a point where Yoshi can't progress. That is sad. Uh, so Yoshi can't go in here. Maybe if there was some way to get a double Yoshi and like have him spawn under you and then go in, but I couldn't figure out how to do that. You can't even um, you can't even dupe Yoshi in this hack. So so Zaplex found this. So there's some warp blocks at the bottom of the screen here. And if you go all the way to the right with cape, you go to the intro screen. <laughs> so that's fun. Except you don't actually start the, the hack over again. Unfortunately, there is nothing in this pipe. Uh, 1.2? No, just kidding. I'm making zero promises for 1.2. If I do a 1.2, for all you know, I'm just fixing some bugs. And then you can go over here. You can also fly infinitely off screen because I got here through a lot. It's the same level as one with the no overworld patch. And because of that, um, the, over, the no overworld dis pat disables screen borders, right? Because you have to walk across it. So you can just go off screen. Fortunately, it doesn't brick your save file and keep you there. Um, so that's one thing. Uh, let's see, what else? Vap also found... You can go out of bounds in the cave area. Uh, like these. <laughs> so that's fun. You can go down here. Oh no. Oh no! There we go. And then you can go on this side. And there's not much over here. <laughs> you can see the other side of the... The entrance to the... Uh... Fortunately, there's no wrong warps here, so... Good for me, I guess. No laser suit. Uh, yeah, you can go back here. And then you can go down, you know, it's just like raw level border stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I have wondered if there was, you can use Yoshi and do some like item swapping. You know, I'm sure there's like some weird stuff you can do. Like there's a, there's a, there's a bouncing chuck in this level at the in the first section. Maybe you could eat it, but I couldn't. Figure out how to do it. That likes inspired me to do some weird stuff. Um, there's nothing up here. I feel like there probably should be something up there, but there isn't. I didn't really think about bringing cape to this part of the hack. Yo, what's up, Fergator? How many hidden moons? Well, um, I think they've all been found, like all the moons. The moons, the moons aren't supposed to be like incredibly well hidden. Like, they're supposed to be reasonable. Um, I think there's like 11 or something. Something like that. Double tongue? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, there's gotta be some stuff. 
Lucky Base Bomb didn't patch out everything. Um. Okay. Um. So that's the main hack. Any, any any other questions about the main hack? I'm gonna go show off some beta levels, and then we'll end. Um, I may not go into the code. I might show the code. I just I don't like my desktop set up. I might share the code in like a simplified form at some point, but I don't know. You got more hunting. There's uh there's definitely some options in this hack. Um. Yeah, okay, let's, um, let's see. I have my notes here. So now I'm going to show some old versions of levels. Um. Starting with the second version of level two. Um, which I think is here. Okay, so Nick's played the first version of level two. I'm just gonna show the second version. I'm just gonna play through it, just so you can kind of see where I was headed. Back when mycelium was a spore. Got some like Titan influence. Um, in these earlier versions, I didn't have start select behavior yet. Like I didn't, I hadn't thought of that yet. So I had these doors to like go back to the overworld. Protect Spiny. So Nick, this is um, the subsequent version of the level you played, which is made more readable and uh, a little easier. A little bit easier. But it's a spiny escort. <laughs> I think what happened is at some point I realized that no matter how fun I make the spiny escort, it's still a spiny escort. And I decided that a spiny escort is just not what I wanted for level two. Oh my god. So you can see it's extremely different. I basically just started from scratch when I redid it. A guinea pig escort. You know, that's a very good idea. I made this a little easier with a Mario salad. I removed some munchers here compared to the first version. I, did, I took out the really brutal shell kicking Koopa that would kill you. So it's, it's an easier version, basically. There they are. <laughs> what? The spiny? The falling Koopas that slaughtered you in your playtest, New Pointless? Shout out to New Pointless, playtester MVP. Uh, Alright, what else is there here? Uh, Alright, now I'm going to show the second version of the Cherry Blossom level, which is the P-Speed level in the final version. Uh, this fall used to be a bunch of munchers. The falling coupling destroyed you. You also didn't realize you had to bring, bring the shell at first, like Nyx. Which is uh, definitely my bad. All right, so the first version of this, Nyx played, I'll probably like, if I put this up as a YouTube video, I'll just like reference his YouTube video my description or something. Um, I don't know. I could also just play it at the end. But I don't want the stream to go too long. Um, but yeah, this is the version 2 of that level. Which is a lot easier. But I, I found it kind of uninteresting. And vanilla... Um, I ended up just scratching this and starting from scratch. What am I doing? You just gotta like stall here on the disco and wait for the bomb to explode. That door takes you back to the overworld. Yeah, Press, this is like a... 
Yeah, yeah, this is a, uh, the, the version after the first version of that Galoomba level. This was my attempt at a improvement, improvement on that level. And this section is, is the slowest, most tedious. <laughs> Look at this. I really wanted to make this Galoomba kicking thing work. But it just, I just could not make it fun. Huh. And then I just kind of kept this part. I don't know, it was, this level was a mess. And then I just have this weird part here. Oh, God. Which is so easy to miss. Ah. No. Silly level. I'm glad I started over on this one. I mean, like, can you imagine if Mycelium had what it, all the levels it has and then this level existed? Like, it, it just wouldn't make any sense, right? And, like, it's also, like, a different kind of chocolate, right? This isn't the kind of chocolate I wanted in the hack. These, these bouncing spiny eggs or custom sprite. Um... And, and I also didn't have any on-off blocks or on-off. I didn't have any on-off blocks in the rest of the hack, and I didn't. I didn't like that I just had them here. So there was a lot of like redesigning, and oh my lord, this bomb throw! I remember New Pointless's feedback on that bomb throw. He was like, "This bomb throw is ridiculous." <laughs> yeah, New Pointless got the brunt of the of the poop although I guess Nyx enjoyed it so different strokes for different folks huh. Huh. yeah and it's got the spiny yeah, I, I don't know this level was out of place at some point I was like eh. The bomb throw is harder. Yeah, Nick, the new point, like Nick loved that original alpha version. <laughs> he was like, hell yeah, this is my fetish. Um, okay, so that's that. That was the second version of that level. Uh, what else? So this version also has the first and only other version of the treetops level. New point, well, you, the bomb throw, you have to like run to the edge and throw and, and it's like very, it's pretty precise. That whole first version was very precise. It was just like weird, it was a weird amount of precision. That was like not what I was actually going for. So this is the first version of the Magic Koopa level. Right about here is when I realized what I wanted the gimmick to be. I wanted, I, it's when I realized I wanted to do the, uh, the thing where like you know the block always turns into a, a Koopa and I kind of realized it late in the level which made the level a little bit unbalanced in my opinion the alpha version was a legit precision level yeah can you ride a disco without being able to control Mario Yes. My goal was to make a hack that was the opposite of the hack New <laughs> Nick Killed Myth would love. I'm not totally sure of it, but yeah, the precision just wasn't what I ultimately wanted. Mycelium in its final form is just about what I was going for. Except for the holding jump out of the pipe in the temple level. So you can see this obstacle is here. There's this one, which is kind of a different version of that other one. And then there's just like some like really normal jumps and obstacles. And then this just sucks. <laughs> <It's> that catch. <laughs> I didn't really like that ending. Uh, you got the shell jump and the vine still. And this part. And then this is like a back shot here. And you get a Koopa shell and avoid the collision. I didn't like make really good use of um, the gimmick. What's up, Goon? We're here. We're doing it. 
Yeah, I think that Koopa dies every time when you stomp on it because it has because it's falling when it lands on the ground. You enjoyed it and asked me if I really what I, what I really wanted. Yeah, you gave me very just transparent feedback and uh, helped me understand how to be a better designer. Like, oh, this is these levels aren't necessarily bad, but a hundred percent not what I was going for. A lot of mini precision. Yeah, I softened it. I made I made it more palatable. I don't know. My goal was to try to make a just a really solid polished intermediate. I wanted to really get at the heart of polished intermediate, you know. And now I can make other things. I will probably never make a another polished intermediate. I don't think I'm ever going to do that again. I will make probably more expert stuff and standard if I make more stuff, you know. I can't really commit to making more stuff. I wanted to make a 2021 hack. Exactly, Fire. Exactly. It's probably why all the big streamers liked it. Because it brought them back to to the golden years before 10 yumps and then they you got this ride just a little bit confusing you have to avoid these blocks and then that jump sucks it's kind of a ridiculous level oh I forgot there's um yo CEO we're getting a CEO raid Hey, what's up? What's up, Seal? Hey, thanks for the raid. You played my Celium. Can I go above the level here? Yeah. But there's nothing. How's it going, Seal? Good to see you. Um, welcome in, Raiders. We're uh, doing a, a developer commentary. I just finished playing through my Celium proper and talking about it and... Uh, talking about all my feelings and behind the scenes. Uh, if y'all don't know CO, check them out. Uh, great streamer. They play Mario and another variety. Very chill stream. You beat all three stories in Sonic Adventure 2. What is that? Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles? Um, nice. GG on that. Welcome in. And uh, thanks for the raid again. Um, all right, there's one more thing here I want to show, and then I have another version with an uh, early version of the Tide level. Um, so this is a really early version of a Temple Sink level, which is pretty much the same, as you can see. Some kind of cosmetic differences, and then the ending is pretty different. A little bit uglier. Oh, that's not a spin jump. What's the optical in any version of any cut level that you most wished you could justify keeping? That's a good question. Ah, oh, man. I really like the... At the end of the spiny ride, when you have to, like, kill the Koopas while riding a spiny, I really like that idea. And I kind of would like to flesh it out. Um... There's a lot of things that like that just didn't make sense in the end. Uh, I'd have to think about it. The fastball thwomp in the fast level, doing an air, a midair catch off the fast thwomp, was fun. There were there were like a lot of things. There were a lot of moments where I was like, "Ooh, I like this optical," but I had to like take a deep breath and be like, "Not this hack." There used to be an up arrow right there. Not this hack. Um, this checkpoint used to be different. <laughs> I don't know why I made it more cruel, but it used to be you stood here <laughs> and got bitch slapped. Uh, if you only start making expert hacks, 
Oh, it'll be a long time, Purgatory. Don't worry. Before I make another... If I if I ever make another hack, like a good hack, I'm going to make a really bad one that'll go in my file bin, and you don't have to play that one. Yeah, I just love this. <laughs> you can make you can make Eating Block do anything on Layer 2. A revenge hack for Nyx. Um, so this was, like, my early ideas for the... Rednor that stuff. I had this like eating block thing. Maybe I'll show up the 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 next revenge level, which is another early version of the water level. So that was like just a bunch of like weird eating block behavior. There's some other versions of this that I'm not gonna show because I don't know where they are. But here's like one early concept. Which is fun, but just a little bit short. So, I had another, I had like two other versions of that slow, of the falling layer two red north fight that were not great. You're looking forward to my degen phase. Yeah, we'll see. Do I show the version with the nudity? I can't promise that. Alright, um, now. Please show the version of its nudity. I'm getting mixed signals. All right, Alpha 3. Okay, this might have one of the levels I'm thinking of. So, at some point before the boss took forever, I was going to have 100% content where you, like, got a switch palace in each hub area. And then that opened up another area. But I was just like... The hack was like taking so long, I, did, I had to cut it. Oh, yo! This is my first attempt at the uh, port. So you can hear my earlier version of this port. Oh, this is an earlier version of the level, which is more confusing. Partial need to be. I'll think about it that much. I do? Don't know if I want to show them. This obstacle is kind of fucked up. And you have to like slide in the water and spin jump on this guy and jump over the shell and then land on the shell and then slide. It's kind of weird. And then don't die to the ball, the dolphin. This looks kind of familiar. I don't, oh yeah, okay. So this section is very similar, but there's just a lot more munchers than sprites. And I think I realized that you can make a level better not necessarily by changing the movement, but by just replacing munchers with interesting sprites. Um, and that's what I did here, is I just... At some point I redid this level, but I replaced a lot of the munchers with uh, urchins and bullet bills and stuff like that. And then I used to not have any guidelines here on how to down pump. Huh. And there used to be a Yoshi, but Blygon got confused. So I took it out. Full backle. Full backle is illegal. The momentum is, is cool. Yeah, I just love the idea of item swimming in a tide. Um, but yeah, that's that's the previous version of that level. Um, I, some, I think SJ tested it and didn't enjoy the precision muncher stuff. So that incentivized me to redo it from scratch. Uh, I used to have a different tile set, which I eventually replaced with vanilla because I thought it looked better. Oh, you can't go in the door in the middle in this version. Uh, let me see if this version has the bonus level or if I removed it. If it doesn't, then that's just too bad. Hey! Secret Switch Palace level. So this was, <laughs> this is a decent level, it's a one screen level that I scrapped because I just couldn't uh, bring myself to do the full 100%. Yeah, exactly, Nyx. It's reskinned. Hang on, I'm going to do this room again. 
So here you have to guide the magic to not to do the right things. So the block snake works out. Ah! I'm kind of sad I had to cut this, but... I don't know. Maybe if I hadn't made a boss fight, I could have I could have fleshed this out. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Ah! <laughs> so it's, it's just levels like a combination of the Thwomp Smash stuff and the, uh... And the Magic Koopas, basically. Oh. And, uh... It existed at some point. Jump is kind of hard. And then it gets kind of puzzly. Oh wait, no, not yet. How many rooms is this? Oh yeah. Uh, you have to kill this to break that to get this to do this. <laughs> And then here, if you just like do a shell jump. Then the Magic Koopa will kill the block and you can't get in the door. Unless you're Nyx. Um, so what you have to do is... What? 50 for 50, yeah, yeah. I didn't really like the one screen thing either. Like it didn't really fit the theme of the hack. No. This level just didn't, it just didn't work out. So you have to get the block spinning so he doesn't kill it. You're about to say. Ah! Can't get in that door. What's up, Tote? I did say unless you're next. It would have been kind of hard to figure out where to put these hidden switch palaces and all the hubs. I think that's another way you can do a, a, a satisfying ending without a boss is to do secrets that come that like culminate in somewhere. Nope. But uh, yeah, that level just didn't become anything. It was also really hard to make. I don't know. Just making... It was all this chocolate stuff and... Uh, just I kind of struggled to make it. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, it, it is a neat idea. That's all I got. Um, I could show you guys some boss code, but I, it's not going to make any sense. It's like thousands of lines of code. I have the attacks all divvied up into different files. Um, if I ever want to, like, share that more, I might. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, what is it? It's about 10.30. What's up, Kit? You're sad the Switch level didn't make it in? Yeah, me too. I... Yeah, it was like, I, I was like, man, I could like finish this level and make two more and then I would have to make like a, a, um, I could, I would have to make a super duper ultimate level and it was just like too much more level design to tack on, um, to tack on to my workload, um, the boss, yeah, I made that all, all by myself. I had a little help from Fernap on, like, some, uh, some, like, how to do certain ASM things. 
Alright, I'll show one last thing before cutting the stream. So I guess I made this for shove the viewer level, but it is actually an old version of the water level from Mycelium. Um, it's called Abandonment. A couple people played this. Toast, Nyx, Zap. Um, yeah, I scrapped it, but it's not a bad level, so I kind of... repurposed it for a contest. Yeah, and I'll show the secret level. There's no way I'm beating it, but I'll show it. Beat it first try. This level, I think I have some, I had Baba help me with some ASM to make the screen not be so low. So the reason I grabbed this level actually is A, it had Yoshi, which broke the lore. And B, there's a bunch of custom blocks and it didn't really match the aesthetic of the hack otherwise. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die! No! <laughs> Wait. Ah. That last key setup is kind of messed up. This is in my file bin if anybody wants to play it. Just because it is kind of a finished product of a level. Oh my god. Um, the other levels I probably won't release uh, in any form, but I, I probably will stick the alpha levels that Nick played, which I did not show today. There are five alpha levels, which are rough. <laughs> I'll probably put them on my file bin, um, but I want to record a clear video with that, just because uh, level two in particular is pretty puzzly. So I want to I want to have some responsibility when I release that to have a clear video and like uh, some accompanying notes. You have to hold up when dismounting Yoshi there. Oh. And for some reason I did I don't have a Yoshi check here. I don't know why. And then that brings you here. With a really ugly GG. Ah fucking goddamn it, Taze. <laughs> <laughs> Is he streaming? Alright, we're gonna raid Mangort soon. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, how do you raid GG and Corrin? Ah, uh, Jesus. Alright, um... I'll deal with that in a second. So if you start select... 99, then it brings you to the whoops level. <laughs> Which is a, a angry level I made after playing Cave of Loathing. Huh! 1.2, no! Oh god. Oh. It made you, it took you like forever, but you enjoyed it? I made this for Nick after Cave, because I was like, alright, Cave is clearly, you know, it's clearly creator bias, like, Nick didn't enjoy it, you know, he just, like, got it in muscle memory, and he, you know, it's just like, he doesn't actually enjoy playing this stuff if somebody else makes it. So I made this, gave it to Nick, and, like, immediately, I can, he's, like, at home in this level, he's, like, settle in, he settles in, he's, it's, like, positive vibes. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, who is this person? So, yeah, that's Nyx. I, try, I tried to make him something that he wouldn't like, and he just ended up liking it, so. Fuck me, I guess. A butterfly landed on his nose. 
Did it? I'm confused. Sometimes New Pointland speaks in poetry. Huh. Fuck tuba. Hmm. Oh god, this, this goddamn level. It, this could take me 10 minutes, this could take me 3 hours. I will... I will give myself till 10.40, and then I'm cutting stream. I have beaten this three times though, so I should be able to beat it. You would think. Uh, Shavda did this. And then she did this. <laughs> she just turned it off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I gotta say I respect it. I think she knew exactly what the vibe... Well, I think she got the energy of this and was like, okay, I don't want to play this. This, this fall? This, the only really, really hard part is this fall into the one tile. This level may or may not make an appearance in another hack <laughs> coming out somewhat soon. So sorry, I guess. It's easier with a duck jump. Hmm. Mario Maker patch in this level? I've heard people do a no-run strap, but to, like, squeeze in there, like, you kind of have to hold run. Anyway, this is not a secret level in Mycelium, just to be clear. This is just a dumb thing I, ma I made because I was mad at Nyx. Reading the sprite position from the duck sprite. That doesn't sound right. It's got to be psychological. Although it would be cool if there was some... Wait, duck spray? Are there ducks in this game? Nine minutes on this. Oh, just, you mean, just mean graphically. I think you meant it in code or something. I was confused. Yeah, may, yeah, you're right. You're probably right. I should also listen to you because pretty much every time I listen to you with precision, it helps me clear the level. Just by far the biggest bottleneck is getting in there. It's got a, I wonder if it's subpixel perfect in any way, to the to the extent that sometimes you just like don't really even have an opportunity to succeed. I'm used to spinning. I think I just want to keep spinning because that's what I'm used to. And if I change up my strat, it's probably not going to go well for me. This is the dev commentary you all came for, I bet. for delivery. <laughs> ah. I 
I remember when I made this, I, I like clear checked it, right? And I was like, it was late in the night and I was like, why? Like I so badly wanted to just delete it and never speak of it again. Grinding it out took so goddamn long. Uh, how is this related to my skill? So the level, this is a secret room in a level that is, that I submitted to a viewer levels contest. And the main level that this is a secret room in is an old version of the water level from Mycelium. That is the connection. Went Big Brave. I actually booted up Big Brave um, recently just to check out the first couple jumps and I was able to make progress. So that gave me confidence that I might be ready uh, somewhat soon. Six more minutes. I'm gonna have to make an all exit category for mycelium now. If Mangord's skipping levels and shit. I said too much. Try to make a fun game and people start breaking it and skipping your hard earned levels. Ah! If you can do the first hard jump, do you mean the second jump in the level under the muncher? Is that the one you're talking about? Well, that jump is messed up, but I think I know how to do it. It's like a really late regrab controlled bounce. Just in case. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that one's really tough. I think I, I can get it with like some consistency, so I'm feeling confident then to hear you say that. But it's like, that is like hardest jump I've ever seen from you. It's the same thing with this level. If I can get this second jump with consistency, everything after it is like kind of reasonable. You have to touch a guinea pig as quickly as possible. If you um, if you do that run, Susa, then I'll make a board for it. Five percent is enough. Ooh, I think I have that. The final jump is tricky. I gotta beat it just so I can like watch anybody else who decides to play it. Four minutes. Pride dog. Oh. <sighs> Got it. That's fucked up. <laughs> Those jumps under the munchers are so difficult, but the Cave of Loathing made it, made me better at them. So, that was a very fitting ending to this developer commentary stream. Thank you all for attending my TED Talk. Glad you enjoyed Mycelium. Um, yeah, I'll uh, maybe release some things related to mycelium uh, in the future and uh, maybe make some more levels. Probably won't devote 18 months of my life to Mario so intensely again anytime soon. I, sh I need to like talk to people in real life and stuff. But very proud of it. Very proud of that hack. You get muscle memory for the jump time timing? Yeah, you do. Which is weird. Like, I thought they were inconsistent, but they are. Thank you, Takeshi Tezuka. Yeah. All these people were were invaluable in the development of abandonment. Hey, thanks, Tez. Appreciate it. 
Thank you, Zap. Thank you, Nyx. Confirmed, I am not real. Mark isn't real? You did tell me you're a bot recently, which was concerning. Hey, what's up, Spoon? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I really appreciate it. I appreciate everybody who played it and enjoyed it. And people who played it and didn't enjoy it. I mean, it is not a, there's no perfect hack. Um, so, the, your, you know, criticism, constructive criticism is welcome and helpful. Um, let's raid Mangort. Let's raid Mangort, who has apparently found some, some, um, like, level skips or something. I have an idea of what it might be. Uh... But, uh, let's do that. Thanks for hanging out. I'll, uh, I'll put this video on YouTube in some form. Thank you, Pigeon. That cave, capeless slope cave boundary break. Hmm. That'd be pretty sick. I hope that's what it is. See you, Fail. See you, everybody. Go say hi to Mangort. Speedrunning the hack. Peace.